did you get as your answer? I got 0.0046 and she got point oh oh four nine. That's like I must have made another mistake. What did you get again, please? 4.9 times into the negative 3, and she got 4.6 times into the negative 3. Yeah, so depending on how you round it off. Okay. So, or if you don't use scientific notation, what would the units on that be? Meters per second, second wave. And did that come out positive or negative? Positive. Is that what we would expect? Yes. So, what is the answer to the question? What is the acceleration? And it is. Um, 4.6 times 10 to negative 3. Yeah, so you always just want to make sure that you've answered the right question. But here we have. Okay, so what, what, you, what we wanted to get here was a more systematic approach for these types of um, constant, uh, for these types of multiple object problems. Well, the first thing is you, you want to have a framework. And our framework, well, we have two different frameworks. We have the framework for non zero acceleration and the zero acceleration framework. So that's one thing a lot of students aren't very conscious about. When there's multiple objects especially, you have to ask yourself, is this object moving with zero or non-zero acceleration? And it's very common to have one of each in these types of multiple object problems. Zero acceleration is just displacement equals velocity times time. And non-zero acceleration is when you use our five kinematics variables. But we have a systematic approach for when there's zero acceleration too. The systematic approach is write down the equation and use that to structure your work. So you, wrote these down, you write these down separately. And then the other thing is that even for a particular object, you might need this framework more than once. Um, here we needed the framework once for the leader from 9,100 to 10,000, and a different framework for the leader from 0 to 9,100. One thing that people tend to be sloppy about is they don't clearly label what each framework refers to. So then they get confused. So notice how I labeled this framework refers to you. And I probably should have specified this means you from 9,000 meters to 10,000 meters, so that I know exactly who these variables are referring to. This refers to the leader from 9,100 meters to 10,000 meters, and this refers to the leader from 0 to 9,100. So that's another very important thing. If you need to use multiple frameworks, you need to label very clearly who each of these frameworks refers to, and then you have to think very carefully about which variables are the same in the various frameworks. That was really the key. We saw that um, this velocity was the same as this velocity, which was the same as this velocity, and these two times were the same. And that's how we were able to, to find the information that we needed. Is there any more questions about this? Does this make sense? Yes. Yeah, All sense. right. Do, do you feel like we have a little bit more of a systematic approach here? The key is treat these as your frameworks and re recognize that you might need multiple frameworks. Well, you will need at least two frameworks because there's two objects. So you need a special framework for each object. And even for the same object, you might need multiple frameworks. Even for the leader here, we had two multiple frameworks. So take your time and really make a nice, clear picture. Notice how in our picture we had to clearly specify where we were at each particular time and who was you and who was the leader. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance dash teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.